Hi, this video is going to introduce you to the uh, template that I made for Chromebooks in the Chrome browser for doing high school and college policy debate. Uh, specific, so that specifically, this is uh, mainly targeted for, I think, kind of novices and for uh, teams that can't afford Microsoft Word for various reasons. Um, I still think verbatim is kind of going to be the best tool to use, but if you uh, need something and you don't uh, have the resources or the ability to get Microsoft Word, I think this will be a nice fill-in. So uh, to get to the debate template installation directions, uh, I've got a short link here, uh, url.d219.org slash debate hyphen template. And then once you're to this page, you go to installation. And this is going to walk us through all the steps we need to do. So uh, first thing we're supposed to do is go to any Google document and we're going to turn on the outline. So I'm going to make myself a brand new Google Doc. I'll name this as my example doc. And you'll notice the outline view for me was already open, so assume it wasn't. Uh, to get it to show up, I believe it's under tools and you open up document outline. And there it is. This is going to be the equivalent of the nav pane that you see in Microsoft Word. Step two, we're going to go to view and we're going to make sure that print layout is not selected. Um, right now it probably is for you and you don't want it to be selected. Um, if print layout is selected that means when you have a full page, uh, let me show you, so let me insert a page break. So you notice I've got a page break, which would normally mean you'd have a full page of blank white space after hello before roll shows up. When you turn off print layout, it uh, condenses it down, and that's usually what you want for uh, a debate document. So make sure under view that print layout is not selected. Um, part three, we're going to turn on something called offline editing in Google Docs, and this varies uh, steps wise from a Chromebook to just Chrome but essentially you want to go into your uh, settings and then you're going to make sure that offline mode is turned on uh, what that will enable you to do is access your files even if you don't have an internet uh, connection so make sure that that checkbox is connected and checked alright so that's step three and then step four we're actually going to add the add-on that I made so here it is, it's free, you click on it, and voila. You hit continue, it made a new document for no apparent reason, but it felt like it. It's going to ask you if you'd like to do all this stuff, hit allow. And then when it's done, something like this will pop up. Um, so this doesn't always, it probably won't pop up for you, the sidebar, so I'll close it um, so you don't see that. But this is what you'll probably see once you get done installing it. Um, it'll tell you some directions here. It's great. You go to add-ons, you'll see a debate template menu, and then you'll see a lot of the options that you'd have from verbatim. It's not all of them, but it's most of them, uh, at least most of the most uh, used ones. Um, the sidebar I'll show you again is here, and these are some uh, common operations that you'll do on a document and uh, if you want them on the side there instead of having to go into the menu that's 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 great um, so there's a timer here if you um, want to keep track of time in your document that's fine uh, you can pick some presets and then start it and then you can stop it if it gets down to 30 seconds it turns red then it chimes when you're done uh, it's very exciting um, so just to show you kind of the basics of how this works, so if you want to make a pocket, click pocket. If you want to make a hat, you click hat. If you want to make a block, I mean this is really crazy stuff, right? If you want to make a tag, you click tag. And then if you want to make a site, you click site. <laughs> so I know I've probably amazed you all with what I've shown you so far. Uh, you can underline, you can emphasis, highlight. Uh, the highlight color is dependent on what's in the preferences, so I'll show you that now. So the default highlight color is green, um, and you can also set where your speech docs will automatically be put to, which I'll show you in a second. So you click that, you find your folder, and, and you'd select it. Um,
Um, you can also, before I overlook that, you can set whether or not the sidebar opens up automatically or not. Uh, right now that feature is sort of broken, so I apologize. Uh, the next version of it, I think I have a fix ready to go. So uh, after I kind of test this out a little bit more, I'll post an update. Hopefully that fixes that. Um, another thing that this uh, template allows you to do is create a new speech. So if I click new speech, uh, you can name your speech. So I'll do like 2AC against, I don't know, Woodward. Sure, hit OK. And what will happen is a new document will be created and will pop open. Here it is. Go back here, and then you can do your normal send to speech operation here. So if I click on block and do send to speech, then over here you'll see exactly what you clicked on. Uh, level wise, anything below what you clicked on is also sent over. Uh, one drawback from verbatim is that you can't select the insertion spot, so it always inserts to the end of the speech. If you ever lose your speech, you can open it again. Uh, and then you can also mark cards when you're in what I would call reading mode. So that's, um, I think full screen is kind of as close to reading mode as you can get. It makes things smaller. And then while you're reading, you can say, oh, mark, that's where I stopped. I don't know why you'd stop halfway in a tag, but you can add those to mark it. Um, some other options, uh, escape gets you out of full screen mode if you don't know that. The debate template also has in here some tools. So if you need to create a sites document or a wiki document, this is here. And if you want to standardize your highlighting, that's also there. So um, those are the standard features. It works fine. Um, now, some things that are bad from what you're seeing here, hopefully you notice that the nav pane doesn't look like what it looks like in Word. Uh, there's way too much space here, and it doesn't allow you to collapse things. The other issue is that you don't have any hotkeys for these menus. These are bad. So there's some optional uh, extra instructions uh, here that are going to be useful. Uh, so these are steps five through seven. In step five, um, on your keyboard, you probably have function keys at the top. But most computers nowadays don't have them work as function keys. They have, have them act as special keys. So like my F1 and F2 keys control the brightness. 10, 11, and 12 control the volume, and I don't want them to do that. I want them to be just function keys. So I have the directions for Mac, Windows, and Chromebooks here. Uh, I'm going to do my Mac. I go into the keyboard settings, and this is the checkbox that I need to make sure is checked. Uh, it says use the function keys as standard function keys, so not as special ones. So you'll want to do the same thing for your computer. Uh, the next step is to install this uh, CSS JavaScript Chrome injector which will allow uh, me to add some special code to Google Docs to do the special formatting I need. So you click it, you add the extension, and there it is. It's that, uh, it looks like you're getting a shot, kind of, and that's sort of what's going on. Um, so here's my document. Uh, so before you do anything else, go uh, to your document. Uh, this is where we're gonna do the injection. So go back to the directions. Uh, next thing you're going to do is you're going to copy all this stuff <laughs> under the CSS section, but right before JavaScript. So everything from here to there and copy it. Uh, you can control click and do copy or command C. Then go back to your document and click on the <laughs> shot icon and you're going to paste this in the CSS section. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to stylize our document, hopefully. So I'm going to click away, and then to see if it works, I'm going to refresh the page, and we'll hope and see if it actually works. Oh, look. Look how nice that is. <laughs> it's nice and small. Um, it still doesn't have the uh, drop-down arrows like we'd like. We'll fix that in a moment. You also notice that it shrinks the sidebar. And if you don't like some of these settings, you know a little CSS, you can, you can change them. But um, that, that, I think, makes it look a lot better. Um, the second thing you need to do is you have this JavaScript section. It goes from here all the way down to there. It's a little shorter. Copy that. Go back to your Google Doc. Do the injection. Click on JavaScript and paste it in. And then if we reload the page again, What should happen now is you can see um, that we now get the nice arrows that we would like, right? So 
This allows us to do collapsing. If you right click in this section, hopefully, there it goes. You can just show top level, show all levels. Uh, so that's kind of nice standard nav pane stuff you know from Microsoft Word. Um, also, if you click on the add-ons menu, hopefully this worked, yep. You can now see that you have function keys that work or should work. <laughs> so to see that, if I, don't know why you take a highlight a site, if I hit F11, oops, oh shoot, I thought I turned that off. Let me go back. Oh, I know why, because I don't have to hit Fn. So if I just hit F11, you'll see that it, it highlights it. So, yay, I have function keys for all these options. And they're the same options that you would use uh, from verbatim. I have tilde working for send to speech and mark, just like in verbatim as well. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else special in here you need to know? That's pretty much the basics. Uh, so now any other document you open up, the outline view will open up automatically. The sidebar is supposed to open up automatically. That's a bug that I'm working on. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is kind of how uh, the debate template will work. Uh, I don't pretend to say that this is a perfect solution or that uh, it'll work all the time. It does only work best if you have an internet connection. So all these uh, menu items here only work if you have internet. So if you go to a tournament and you don't have internet, um, that could be a problem. So you just need to kind of think about what you'll do if that happens. One easy solution is to have a hotspot. Um, that, that's probably the easiest thing to, to do if, if you're going to have uh, issues with that. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much the entire install process. One last thing I'll say is, um, this stuff in here is a little bit maybe frightening, what I put in here. Um, uh, just to let you know what it's doing, there are uh, these two commands here are reading, this command here is reading in a file from my uh, Google Drive that has some extra CSS stylizing options. And the same thing here, I'm reading in some JavaScript code from my website. If, if you'd like to look at these documents, if you copy and paste this into your URL bar, you can see the actual JavaScript file um, and see what it's doing. I, I promise I'm not trying to do anything funky with your computer, um, but if you would like to look at the file to make sure it's okay, or if you'd like to use a different file, like you make a different JavaScript file and you want it to read in that one that stylizes your document differently, that's totally fine. Or if you know code and uh, want to find bugs in it and let me know about it and tell me improvements, you can tell me that as well. But just so you know, this is reading in uh, data from my Google Drive uh, to uh, you know, get the settings working right. So that's it. Um, hopefully this uh, installation guide made sense. Once again, if you find any bugs or have any, uh, you know, find any mistakes, let me know. My email is mattfy at d219.org. Um, Let's clear that. Uh, so send me an email, and uh, I will try to fix whatever problem you have as soon as I can. Uh, I may not be able to fix it right away, and even if I can fix it right away, I may not post it right away. I may wait a little while until I get some more bugs. So here it is. Test it out. Let me know if you have any problems. Thanks.